creating a user to add to a vSphere namespace. In order to demonstrate adding permissions within a namespace, we need to have a user. This system is not connected to Active Directory, so we're going to create a new user within the vSphere.local identity store. Here we have users and groups. We're going to select the vSphere.local identity store and add the new user. We'll call that user DevOps. If you already have your vCenter configured with Active Directory, you can skip this step. So now we're going to add the DevOps user to vSphere.local. That's Now we're going to go through the process of creating a vSphere namespace in a vSphere with Tanzu cluster. We've already configured workload management, and now we are ready to create the namespace. Clicking on na Create Namespace, we select the cluster. We give it a DNS compliant name. In this case, we'll call it DevOps NS for namespace. Select the network that it'll be running on that was pre-configured as part of the workload management setup. And then give it a description and click Create. So our namespace has been successfully created. Now let's configure it. First, we'll start with permissions. Using the user we created earlier called DevOps, we're going to assign that user a role. There's one of two roles to pick, can view or can edit. We're going to give that user the can edit role, which will allow him or her to create new content. Now we're going to assign or edit the storage policies of the namespace or that will be used by the namespace. We're going to select Kubernetes demo storage. Click OK. And you will see that the storage policy has now been configured. We're going to open up the link to the CLI tools. This will allow us to run the kubectl command to connect to the namespace. On a Mac, we're going to download the plugin. And this will consist of some binary files that you will put in your path. So here we're downloading the vSphere plugin zip file. opening the file, which will expand it, and you'll see the kubectl and kubectl vSphere binaries. These will be added, as I mentioned before, to the system path. If you want to learn more about vSphere namespaces, there's a vSphere blog and vSphere documentation that will lead you through these steps in greater detail.